Hi, Brent Tech here, where tech is made simple. So about two months ago, I posted a video that Microsoft had confirmed the Windows 11 23H2 feature update. And in that video, we had a look at more or less what we could expect to see roll out with version 23H2. Now that video was posted a couple of months ago, and since posting, there have been a couple of new developments, which I thought we could do a quick follow-up video on and focus today for the purpose of this video. Now, I'll leave a link to that video down below as it will give you a foundational overview of what to expect regarding version 23H2. And version 23H2 is still in development. So obviously, this list is subject to change that we're going to look at today. And these are just a couple of the key features that we are expecting to see roll out. And over and above this, there will also be a lot of other little tweaks and adjustments which we are not focusing on in this video today. Now, um. This is a quick summary of a recent article that was posted by Windows Central, which gives us a um, overview as to some of the key features we can expect to see with the next feature update. Now, the next major version of Windows 11, version 23H2, is currently being tested in the beta channel in the Insider program. So most of the features are currently in the beta channel, which we can expect to see roll out with version 23H2. And we can also expect to see some features um, rolling in from the dev channel. And the build will be 22631, which is currently uh, being tested in the beta channel. And the release date for version 23H2 um, will start at the end of September and move into October and November of this year, as Microsoft is known to do with the major version updates and feature updates they do roll out in the latter half of every year. Now, the big one with version 23H2 and the first key uh, feature is Windows Copilot, which is bringing centralized AI assistance to the Windows 11 desktop. And Windows Copilot um, is going to be replacing Cortana, which already has started to be deprecated on Windows 10 and Windows 11. And it's uh, basically a web container um, on the Windows 11 desktop. And as you can see here, uh, we also get the taskbar button on the taskbar. So if you click that, it opens up Windows Copilot as a web container, which will let you do things like change your settings on your PC, summarize documents, and um, you'll also be able to change other Windows functions and enable other little settings and features in Windows 11 using the Copilot. And uh, um, as mentioned um, in previous videos, Cortana was a digital assistant where Copilot is going to be a artificial intelligent assistant. So it's basically a souped up version of Cortana. Then moving on to the next, and we get in a new file explorer, which um, is going to have a major update for an in version 23H2. And it's also going to bring some layout changes. Now just to zoom in here so you can see this a bit better in the video. Currently in the stable version, um, we get the tabs at the top. And then underneath the tabs, we get the toolbar. And then underneath the toolbar, we get the address bar. Now, as you can see, that's uh, been changed around. So the address bar with version 23H2 will be moved to with where the toolbar currently is. And the toolbar will be moved to underneath the address bar to where the address bar currently is. So basically, your address bar and your toolbar are being swapped around. And then over and above that, and Microsoft is also updating the folder view. Uh, the home page. So here we can see home page and here we'll see you get the recommended section with your thumbnail preview as an example. Um, you will also have new home buttons and you'll also have a new details pane and the look and feel will also match that of Windows 11 and there will also be a new gallery feature. And the new gallery is basically bringing your photos into the file explorer and integrating photos into file explorer which will be able to be used with onedrive and your phone link app and it will also have a timeline as many of you will know if you do use the photos app which will help you scroll back in time and there will also be other options to and um, basically edit a photo using the photos app so as mentioned a major update is rolling out uh, for the new file explorer then a feature which i'm personally happy to see is microsoft is finally bringing a cloud backup app and tool to Windows 11, which is going to make it easy to do things like backup your folders, your apps, your settings, your credentials, like your Wi-Fi networks and other passwords. And uh, um, it'll help you to backup your the, all those different settings um, 
folders, apps, and so on. And that will be to your OneDrive storage where you'll be able to restore when, as an example, setting up a new PC for the first time. So if you are setting up a PC for the first time, when logging into your Microsoft account, you will then be prompted to restore from a previous PC. And that means you can bring all your folders, app settings, credentials, and so on um, over from that um, previous PC into your new setup with just a couple of clicks. So this is a feature I'm also personally quite happy to see rolling out the new um, backup tool with version 23H2. Then this next one, as I have been posting on previously, is a highly requested feature where we are, where we are getting taskbar and grouping rolling out. Now, as many of you will know, um, taskbar and grouping um, was available with Windows 7 right through to Windows 10. And then for some reason, Microsoft didn't introduce it into Windows 11. And because of that, obviously due to user feedback, Microsoft now is returning, um, being able to show your labels and ungrouping taskbar pinned icons and taskbar icons with version 23H2, which as mentioned is a highly requested feature. Now, another new feature I'm personally happy to see roll out is a new volume mixer um, where you'll be able to adjust audio levels from specific apps. And this will be able to uh, be used with your Windows 11 quick settings panel to manually adjust audio levels from individual apps that are playing sound. So as you can see here in this example, um, you'll have a volume mixer. So you'll be able to adjust your Edge browser's volume and your speaker volume um, with two different volume sliders. You'll also have spatial audio and you also have your output device and a keyboard shortcut to open up the quick settings panel for the new volume mixer, which I personally think is a nice move in the right direction. Then we're also getting archive support, where Microsoft is finally bringing native archive support to Windows, to Windows 11, which means you don't have to use a third-party app and a third-party tool to um, unzip um, um, different archive formats like 7-zip and RAR and so on. But just take note, though, that you won't be able to create a new archive format, you'll only be able to read a archive format with um, the new archive support rolling out with version 23H2, which as you can see is going to be part of that right-click context menu for different files as an example. Then and moving on to the next, and this is the new dynamic lighting feature where Microsoft is going to be introducing RGB peripheral controls directly into the Windows 11 settings app, which means you'll be able to customize RGB settings on your uh, different peripheral devices like keyboards, mouse, monitors, and so on. And um, that's without having to download, once again, a third-party app to do so. So there's a couple of changes Microsoft is making here without the need now with version 23H2 to download those third-party apps. So dynamic lighting, on its way with version 23H2. Now for this next one, um, this has already started rolling out to some extent to the stable version, which is the new Paint app, which supports dark mode. And uh, um, I have posted on this just a couple of days ago, but just to do a quick recap, um, obviously the big one is we're getting dark mode support. You'll have better zoom controls, uh, you'll have presets as an example, and then another one which I personally use is fit to window, which I actually find quite handy. So if you aren't seeing um, the new Paint app with dark mode support and those better zoom controls um, before version 23H2, then it will be rolling out uh, with the 23H2 feature update in your region. Now, like most feature updates, Microsoft will be making improvements and adjustments to the widget board. And uh, the big one here is that Microsoft is going to include new layouts that will allow you to choose between having widgets separate from the news feed, mixed with the news feed, and no news feed at all. So which means, um, which I think has been a long time coming, you'll be able to turn off your news feed, which I think a lot of users want to do, and then you can solely use this as an actual widget board, which I think will be a nice move in the right direction. And then um, moving on to the last new feature for the purpose of this video. And we're going to be getting a new Windows Dev Drive Dev Home app, which is mainly focused at developers. And the, uh, the actual uh, Dev Home app has started rolling out already to the stable version, which is still in preview, which I have posted on previously. And basically, um, 
it's an app designed to make setting up a new dev machine easy as possible, which gives you access to um, your your projects over on GitHub and a lot more. So um, if we just head over to that quickly, just so we can just put it all into context for this video, here's the new dev home, which is still in preview, but you can already download it uh, for the stable version as an example. And the big one with this is if we head back to our widgets board, you'll be able to include a whole lot of system monitoring widgets that can be added to the dev home app and your widgets board as I have posted on previously, as you can see. And in this case, I've got CPU and memory, which will be widgets from the dev home app you can attach. And you can also pin those to the homepage in the actual app. So that's something else we can expect to see roll out with uh, 23H2. And um, getting back to that screenshot, it's also going to let um, developers, as an example, create a system partition um, for software development. And yeah, we can see this is a, a screenshot of uh, the actual dev, uh, Windows Dev Drive app where you can create that different system partitioning. So that's just a couple of the key highlights we can expect to see roll out with the version 23H2 feature update, which as mentioned, this was not a comprehensive list and we are expecting the feature update to start rolling out at the end of September, moving into October and November. So thanks for watching and I will see you guys in the next one.